Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to KT Confidential, the real estate podcast. In this episode, we wrap up our series uh, covering the top real estate related search terms on Google. And this one is answering the question about why you should buy, or sorry, why you should hire a real estate agent to help you buy a home. Howdy, friend. How are you? What are you doing? Oh, just skimming through the most recent listings that are on my watch list. Yeah. Anything exciting? Yeah, actually. There's how's, some... how's the market, Adrian? How's the market? Um, why do you ask? Are you in the market to buy or sell or are you thinking about investing in some real estate? Becoming a landlord? That was a great answer, except you should have said, that's a great question. Oh, my apologies. You should sit through some of my sales training with the rest of the team. <laughs> yes, sir. So today we're following up last week's episode. Last week we talked about why you need to hire a realtor or why. Answering the question, why should I hire a realtor? So last week we talked about selling. Selling. This week we're talking about buying. Do- buying, not and a, dying. And a I little, almost said dying. And a little bit of... Uh, Leasing. Yes, Excuse me. Do you want to get the leasing out of the way first or the buying? Uh, let's talk about leasing quick. It'll be quicker. Um, well, there's two sides to rental properties. There's the uh, landlord side and the tenant side. Uh, the th- landlord side, can I just get that out of the yeah. way quick? Because the landlord side is an absolute no-brainer for me. Yes. You're going to pay, well, the average is one month rent. Yeah. Right? Like you can offer up whatever you want. Obviously, commissions are negotiable, blah, blah, blah. Industry standard for us. You know, it's not price fixed, but one month rent is pretty common. And that one month of rent is split between the brokerages, whoever is representing the landlord, whoever is representing the tenant. Correct. Average rental price in Halton, I don't know, three grand. Let's just say, so it costs you three grand plus HST. If you were to do it on your own, you got to get some advertising, you got to get some photos, you got to get some signage. There's a few things you need to do. You don't have to. It's just there's there's a difference. That's what what you're paying for. Right. I'm comparing kind of trying to compare Apple to Apple more or less. So you're going to spend a thousand bucks right out of the gate. No question in my mind. To do it properly. And that's not even, is it properly? I don't know. Well, properly from the perspective of getting a listing up with photos and signage. Sure. Yeah. If you, And that's assuming you're not listing on the public MLS system. That's just using, you know, local classifieds mm-hmm. GG Marketplace, which can work. But the challenge with those things is you're going to be bombarded with a lot of shitty applicants. That's where bombarded all... Bombarded is not even the word. Yeah. You like completely inundated with is inundated bigger than I don't bombarded. Know. I was just thinking <laughs> that myself. <laughs> You're gonna be up Shits Creek. Let's put it that way. Yeah. Because everybody is going to be contacting you. <laughs> if if you didn't get for a properly priced home, and if you have a nice photos, nice home. If you didn't get at least 10 to 20 calls or emails a day, I would be surprised. So now you have to facilitate all of it. You got to field those calls. You got to show the property. Well, yeah, let's assume this is an existing tenanted property or even vacant. You you have to be there for all of these people to go through. Right. And half of these people aren't qualified. Right. And half of these people aren't going to provide you documents to prove otherwise because you're just some random person. You're not you're, even a licensed real estate agent. Right. So why would I provide some random homeowner yeah. all of this stuff before I even see the home? Right. You're not licensed to represent me. I just want to see the house. Yeah. That's just the start of it. Then you show the house and then gathering all of these supporting documents then trying to decipher if those supporting documents, A, are legit, making any reference calls. So, I mean, we could probably talk about that for a long time. Plain and short, if you're a landlord, 
Don't try listing the property yourself, especially in this market. Maximize and kind of like what we talked about in the last episode. And maybe we should have talked about landlords in the last episode because listing for sale, listing for lease. Anyways, um, plain and short, don't, uh, don't do it on your own in this market. Happy to help guide you. If you are thinking of doing it on your own, you need some advice, give me a call. I'm happy to walk you through the differences. The one thing I would say is really important in hiring a real estate agent to list your property for lease is just ask them what their process is to vetting tenants. Yeah. Uh, that's really important. hundred um, percent. Let's move on to, because we've, this we've is discussed supposed to that be, in another podcast, so you yes. can go back and find that. Maybe we'll include a link in the description for it. Sure. So let's move on to tenants. Tenants. If you're a tenant, why do I need a realtor? Tenants a no brainer. I mean, I, I mean, obviously they don't know that because the vast majority of tenants we uh, meet are not represented. And most of them, it, I don't know if most, but certainly a lot of them are not even aware that it's an option. And those who are aware that it's an option, they think there's a cost associated with it. So there's, right. there's no cost, first of all. Uh, second of all, the big thing with... Um, there's no cost because the landlord, the landlord is, is paying, paying, compensating your real estate brokerage. So what we just talked about, that one month rent. Or where your designated representative. Yeah. <laughs> it's a whole other podcast New there, Adrian. New forms out there. Yes. Uh, the other thing too is if you're, I mean, as a tenant, you have to sell yourself to prospective landlords. And first of all, putting together a detailed quality application, rental application with all of the supporting documents is obviously not an easy thing to do because even most real estate agents submitting them to us suck. They don't have the right documents. Half of them are hard to read. Um, there's very little information provided. So you really need somebody that knows what they're doing representing you. 90% of the applications we get with an offer are missing supporting documents of some kind, and we have to go back and keep asking for. Well, it's funny because a lot of these agents don't even understand why we require them. Right. Like, why do you need two consecutive pay subs? Why does it matter that it's three months old? Like, right. You know, so as a tenant, if you have all of this information put together for you, you have somebody guiding you along the way, it makes things so much easier. And it is more likely that your offer is going to get approved. Right. And let's say you are. If you are represented by a good realtor and they take the proper protocols of putting your applicant's package together and they have an offer that you are submitting, which doesn't have any errors, has all the proper clauses, and it's all put together nicely, and you send that off to the landlord and the landlord's representative, you have a significantly higher chance of having your offer lease approved. And if you're anything but perfect, it's going to be a bit of a process trying to persuade landlords to accept you, excuse me. And the just having to sell yourself to every landlord every time over and over is not easy yep. versus having somebody do it for you. So you, by having a professional real estate agent on your side, the information being conveyed to the landlord or the landlord's agent is better received. Right. Like if you're telling somebody, oh, I'm great, I'm great. I won't, you know, I'm going to be a perfect tenant. I'm going to pay my bills. I don't smoke. I don't have pets. You know, it's a biased opinion coming from them versus somebody representing you. Sure. People with the worst credit and worst job history think they're great too. Correct. All right. If you're buying real estate, why do you need a realtor? It's funny because I think a lot of people, that, first of all, don't even know what they want. And, you know, I've talked about this before. I had a client, actually, we're working with them again now. Um, and, you know, when I first met them, they interviewed me and I asked them, you know, why, why are you interviewing me? You've moved before, you've had representation before you, you know, why, why am I here? And their biggest com complaint of the last round of purchasing a property was that their real estate agent I don't know how to convey it, but I guess they basically, they didn't give them any direction. They just kind of, 
you know, went with the flow. They went with the flow and they did as the buyers were asking and saying versus providing some insight and trying to specifically persuading them to spend $30,000 more on a house that they loved because there was this property they wanted to buy, but it was 30000 more than they wanted to spend. So they settled for something less. And that's the reason they were moving again, because they were just unhappy with what they bought. But if they had somebody providing more guidance and maybe opening their eyes to, hey, where are you going to be in five years? Maybe we should consider this, this, and this, because as your lifestyle changes, you'll still you know, be able to uh, grow in this house versus outgrow this other property. Well, and the opposite also, sometimes buyers get that HGTV effect and walk into a nicely presented, nicely staged property. And even though it's $100,000 over what it should be worth in the market, they fall in love and want to buy it right away. Sometimes you have to reel them in and say, just so you know, you are overpaying and here's why. Don't be all mushy gushy over all of this nice furniture. So having that experience and that professional opinion with somebody to hold your hand. And of course, just scheduling everything is a big task. Like if we if we go back and we start from the initial process of a realtor working with a buyer, it all starts with a consultation, sitting down, getting to know each other, making sure that you like each other and can work well, because oftentimes it's going to be a six month, three to six months at a minimum relationship. Mm -hmm. If you figure you from the consultation to viewing properties, putting in offers, having an accepted offer, going through any conditions and then closing, there is a three to six month window that you are in a relationship together. So, it's not like you're hiring somebody and it's wham, bam, thank you, sir. It's I am here to represent you for the long run. It's a relationship and we have to work together for that ultimate result. There's a lot of hours that go behind the scenes when somebody's representing you to purchase any kind of real estate. And I don't know that the general consumer understands how many hours of labor goes into representing them. And much like a tenant doesn't pay out of pocket for having representation, same thing goes with buyers in most cases. So buyers will sign a buyer representation agreement that allows the brokerage and the brokerage's representative to represent them in the purchase of the agreement of whatever real estate they're buying, assuming that the seller and the listing brokerage are remunerating the other brokerage according to the MLS. Those numbers are usually the same. So your buyer representation agreement, let's say, is at 2.5%, and the listing uh, brokerage is offering 2.5%, the buyer doesn't pay anything. It's being paid by the... Well, the, and when, I mean, thinking from the buyer's perspective, though, in reality, the reason they're... They think they can save money. Well, they think they can save money, but, and here's the challenge with that. They think the seller is going to save money. Well, in well, in essence, they think and then they that they're save saving money. money. Right. That, otherwise, they wouldn't do it. If they didn't, if they didn't think they could save right. money, they wouldn't do it. So they think they can save money. So why do they think that? Well, they think that they can save the commission that's being paid to a cooperating brokerage. Right. So that now all of a sudden that that money is not right. You're taking out one of which the, is not true. Well, it it is sometimes right in reality. In reality, there are some brokerages that promote, "Hey, I'll sell your house for one percent." And the way the way they do that is by if they represent both parties, they won't pay out extra money to that other party. So it can happen. Sure. But the challenge with it is same thing. You could list your home for a dollar. Yeah, but it, and it happens. But uh, the challenge with it is a couple things. One, there's a huge conflict of interest when you don't have representation. And the person representing the seller is now, depending on how you've structured it, potentially representing you. And if 
if they are getting paid, I've seen many circumstances where one agent represents both parties and very questionable things have happened, like houses have either sold for way too much or way less than they should have, uh, even when taking into account any sort of commission savings. The other factor is that sellers will often have a conversation with their real estate agent saying, hey, if you represent both of us, what sort of savings do I get? So now if the seller is expecting the savings and you're expecting the savings, who's really saving? Probably neither of you are both getting shafted because the real estate agent wants to make more money. So you're both trying to save, neither of you are saving. And now the who is the realtor acting for in terms of representing their best interests? Right. So for us as a team. How do you, in good faith, as a buyer's agent, as a listing agent, any agent, represent both parties where the seller wants to get as much money as possible for the home and the buyer wants to pay the least amount of money for the home? Well, there is, I have two examples. Two examples. So there was um, my best friend out in Edmonton, and he was shopping for a house years ago, and he found a house he loved, and uh, the agent offered, or he was representing himself, he went direct uh, to the listing agent, and that agent offered him a sum of money off, it was like thirty to $50,000, something like that. Um, but I kept insisting, like, go get your own representation. So eventually he did, he interviewed a few people, found somebody he was comfortable with, went back to the house, and then he found out it was overpriced by about a quarter million dollars. So he was going to buy it with the thirty to fifty thousand dollar discount, thinking he was saving, but he wasn't. He was overspending by a quarter million dollars. Also, did he end up buying the house? No. He Why? He uh, he just didn't end up buying. It. He ended up buying something else. I don't know the reason. I'm sure it was because I thought it was because that seller was just stuck in their ways, and they were. But if he was willing to buy it originally. With a thirty to fifty thousand dollars savings, because they wouldn't budge on the price. I see. So, so he, when he found when out he found the out market, the value was the market value. too high, or right. the price was too high relative to he value, he didn't care about the house anymore. It was more about he the moved value. On. Yeah. Right. Um, I just recently helped people buy a house, who um, they told me to put in a certain price point. I suggested a much lower price point, um, into the five figures. And we did, and they got it. And they're like, oh, wow, I'm glad you listened. We listened to you. Um, so, you know, and and they were willing to spend a lot more money. So sometimes we're able to get, provide people. And sometimes it's the opposite way. Sometimes we advise people to spend more money because otherwise they'll never get a house. So much like we talked about in the past and the most recent episode it's the same thing with having the experience with being in and out of homes all the time, with negotiating all of these deals all the time, with knowing the intimate value of the property, what's being built around the neighborhood, what schools are good, where are the parks, where are the plazas, is this flooring any good, is this home going to appreciate like the rest of the homes or is there any difference How long is that fridge potentially going to last? Like just having the experience and the intimate knowledge of the neighborhood, the type of home, the features, the benefits, all of those things that attribute a home's value. You need that experience. You need somebody to hold your hand and walk you through that process. This is the largest purchase in your life. You should, it's just like why you wouldn't um, hire the cheapest dentist or pull your own teeth out. I guess kids sometimes do, but you want to have somebody that's representing you, your best interest, make sure you're getting the right home at the right price with the best terms, the best conditions on your behalf, making sure that all of the legalities are covered, all the T's and I's. Again, same thing from the last episode. And you will have, I can't think of the last time I had a buyer or there was a buyer that anybody on the team represented where there weren't an absolute ton of questions, whether they're an experienced buyer or not, there are a ton of questions that come up 
and somebody experienced are able to answer those questions for you. So you need that experience. I agree. I don't think there's anything else to it, really. Yeah, I don't either. Plus, you'll have a friend for life. There you go. But also just, you know, check out our videos on hiring properly. So you figure out who, make sure you get somebody who represents you properly. Yes. It's very important because in many cases, maybe you should have done it on your own. So do your due, <laughs> do your due diligence and connect yourself with somebody reputable that will take good care of you. If you have the right representation, it will make your life so much easier. It'll be a better investment in the long term, certainly. Yeah. And it'll make sure that you don't end up in court, hopefully. And if you do, they're <laughs> licensed and insured. You can sue them. There you go. Another reason to have a real to represent <laughs> you. All right. We'll see you next week. See ya. Cheers. There you have it. I hope you enjoyed this episode. And hopefully it provides some help on your search to purchase your next piece of real estate or maybe your first piece of real estate. And leave us a comment. Let us know how your search goes. And make sure you subscribe to catch the next episode. Ciao.